Okay, let's talk about the FTCE general knowledge test. And if you're watching this video, I assume you're an aspiring teacher in the state of Florida. So congratulations on uh, that. Um, this test, as you well know, is pretty much a uh, basic skills uh, test. It is required uh, that you do uh, pass it. And one of the topics on the test is math. And generally speaking, with all teacher certification exams, um, like this, the number one area where people are going to struggle in is mathematics. So a little bit about uh, myself. I am a math teacher, taught middle school math, high school math, and beyond. And I know what it's like to take teacher certification exams. I didn't teach in the state of Florida. Uh, I actually had to take the praxis exam for the states uh, that I've uh, taught in. But whether it's uh, the FTCE or the praxis or another uh, test, teacher certification um, exams at any level are challenging, as they should be. They're professional exams. So even if you're pretty good in math, you still need to do the studying and uh, review in order to not take any chances on uh, not passing this test the first time around, right? You want to get in there, pass it, and get done with it. So this particular video is a little kind of pop quiz on uh, a math uh, topic that you should know. Um, but before I get started, I want to let you know that if you're looking for a good way to study for the FTC general knowledge math portion, I, off I offer a, a, a great course for this. I'm going to leave the link in the description so you can check that out if you want. But let's get into this uh, little practice problem here. So what I want you to do is I have some information here. I have an XY plane. I have two points on this uh, XY plane and a line that goes through those two points. So what I'd like you to do is to calculate the slope of this line. So a question would be kind of like, find the slope of a line that passes through uh, the point 2, 5, and 6, 11. So if you think you know how to do that, um, you might want to pause the video and just kind of see if you uh, understand this. If you don't, no problem. I'm actually going to go through it. Now, I don't want to um, turn this into a complete full lesson because there's a lot of topics here that you know the, that we can get into that you you definitely need to know. I'm just going to kind of solve the problem, speak generally about this concept of, of slope, and then we'll call it a wrap. But um, all right, so with that being said, I'm going to go through and uh, uh, first calculate the slope, and then we'll explain uh, what it is. So when you're calculating the slope, given two points, what you want to do is we want to find the rise over the run of the line. And basically what that means is we need to take our y values. So remember, this is a point, this is x, this is y, and this is x, and this is y. Now, if you don't remember this, or if this is kind of confusing to you, then obviously you need to do some work. But basically the rise here, okay, remember the slope is defined by the rise over the run of the line. The rise is basically the um, result of subtracting our y values. Okay, So we take our y values here and this is going to be our rise. So let's go ahead and subtract 11 from 5. So 11 minus 5. This would be our rise and our run is going to be the differences of the y values. Okay, So we had our, I'm sorry, our x values. So we had our y's in the numerator Okay, and our run is going to be our x values here. So now because I started with 11, and this is very important what I'm going to be saying here, because I started with 11 in my calculations here, I have to start with the respective x value that's next to this uh, 11. So I have to start with 6. If I started with the 2, you can this is a very common mistake that, that students make, you'll get the problem wrong. So if I start with the 11, I got to start with the 6. Okay. Now. I could get this right if I start with the 5, I just have to start with the 2. So I'm going to start with the 6, okay, this is my x's now, and I'm going to subtract the other x, which is 2. All right, so hopefully this, you know, is making sense to you. Now, I am kind of going somewhat quick because I don't want to turn this uh, little video into a complete full lesson on all this stuff, but hopefully you're, you're following what I'm saying. Now, when I calculate this out, this is going to actually give me the specific uh, slope of this line. Now the slope in algebra is, de uh, is often defined by this little variable m. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So m, 11 minus 5 is 6, and then 6 minus 2 is 4. So we can reduce this fraction over, uh, as 3 over 2. 
Okay, so that's the answer. Okay, the slope of this line is three over two. So, but what does this mean? So we have three over two. Well, what this means is this. For every three, this uh, line rises, okay, it runs out two. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, for every two it goes out, the run is how much a line goes from left to right. This is the run. And then the rise is how much a line goes up or down. So let's see how this works, okay? So this ratio tells me, is defining the steepness of this line. So for every two I run out, let's, let's, pick, let's start from this point on the line. So I can run out two. That's just basically going directly to the right. So one, two, okay? So for every two I run out, I go up three. This is my rise, one, two, three. Now I could do that anywhere on the line. So let's start here. For every two I go out, I go up one, two, three. So here I can say, okay, this line goes out two, one, two, and it goes, for every two it goes out, it goes up three, one, two, three. And so from these two points, I can define, draw this a little bit better, I can define the slope of the line, which is the angle of the line. So in this case, the slope M is three, over two, and that's basically all it is. Now, of course, there's more to it, and you're going to be able to understand the slope on a lot of different levels. One, you're going to have to be able to calculate the slope. It's an extremely important skill in algebra. You're going to need to know the definition of the slope, okay? And then uh, you're going to need to know conceptually what it represents. Now, we, we're kind of using some easy numbers here because we can get negative slopes and zero slopes and undefined slopes etc but if you understand you know this basic problem here then you know hey you can definitely learn the uh, the rest of the stuff and this is absolutely necessary and required to ha have your basic algebra skills of graphing lines and finding the equation of lines but um anyways i don't want to really go beyond uh what i kind of explained for this particular problem but if you understood this then again you know, especially if you struggle with math for the FTCE general knowledge test, you know, that's that's always, you know, that's a tough thing because a lot of you are out there, you're, you're struggling, you're frustrated, but you really have to break up math in little, little bite-sized skill sets. So if you understand this, it's just, that's great because now that just shows that you can understand the stuff. You just have to understand a lot of little components all at once, put the work in, but all together, collectively, you'll have, um, the math skills uh, you need to do uh, really well on the FTCE general knowledge test. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, again, if you think you like my teaching style, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to my FTCE general knowledge prep course. It's an excellent, super comprehensive course. Um, also, I literally have hundreds of uh, videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this exam as well. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, uh, are you basically going into teaching right out of college? Or are you transferring from one career to another? Um, you know, it's funny. In teaching, uh, you know, especially nowadays, there's so many different paths to become a teacher. It's really... Uh, you know, I think opened up a lot of options for people who want to become teachers later in life. You don't have to go back and get your teaching uh, certificate first. There's things like the alternate route program in some of the, uh, the state that I taught in, where you can kind of be teaching and working on your certification. But, you know, in the state of Florida, as of other states, it doesn't make a difference what path you're taking to get your uh, credential. You still have to pass these certification exams, which means you're going to really have to work at it. But any feedback you would leave me is good for uh, just to let me know about your story and uh, gives me ideas on future videos that might be able to help you out as well. But with um, you know one teacher to another, teaching is a challenging career. Uh, most people who aren't teachers just don't get it, but that's just the way it is. But here's the thing, though. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, uh, you know, um, you have to work hard in it. But you kind of know that going up front, you know, into a career. But at the same token, teaching is a very rewarding career, and we need great teachers. So if this little video helps you out, or if I can help you out in any other way, then, uh, you know, I kind of serve my purpose with this video. But I wish you all the best on the FTCE, General Knowledge Test. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.